Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. We're speaking with uh, the chairman of uh, Live Company Group, David Siklatira. How are you today, David? Fine, thank you. Look forward to speaking to you. Okay, just for the people who don't know uh, too much about you, your your class is at Media Group, but uh, what what, is, what, is that, what does that entail? Uh, we're primarily a live content event company. Um, we are um, the majority of the business is based around an acquisition that took place um, at the end of last year of the Brick Live Group company, um, which is a company that stages shows and other related activity based around Lego content. So to me, it seems to be you're like the Madame Tussauds for children. Is that is that would that be a, like a, a bit inaccurate, or would that be near to what you do in terms of at least the interest? I suppose the common the common denominator is that we do actually have quite a lot of statues, and in fact, today we've just announced um, a new initiative. We announced an initiative a couple of months ago called Brick Live Touring, which is a um, themed show. Um, Brick Live Touring Animal Paradise is this particular show, um, based around endangered species. Obviously, very, very topical right now. And the show, which will launch in Macau at Christmas and then move to Korea, potentially Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, is literally 60 animals built in Lego in a mega dome, which is interactive with. Um, uh, real life imagery both inside and outside the dome based on education I think one of the biggest important things we were involved with is education we have a significant business already in um, Asia and age, ed, 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 education everywhere is important but particularly in Asia um, since we started as a live company group um, uh, uh, acquisition of Brick Live Group the number of shows in the cities we've been involved in has grown significantly in the last six months. We're now estimated to be in 60 cities by the year end. Um, so Brick Live is quickly becoming a global brand. Right. I mean, uh, my, my question as a, as, a, as a parent of four uh, young children is that uh, they, their parents tend to be quite, uh, let's say, desperate to entertain and educate their children. And... Uh, Factors such as recession or like not having very much money uh, don't really come into that. I mean, it's it's a it's almost like a non discretionary spend that they have on their little kids. Is that a fair thing to say? Well, you're absolutely right. If I look, yeah, if I, if I look at the UK, our prime show in the UK, and remember, we are a company that franchises, licenses out the content, so we don't promote. In the, is a company promote uh, Brick Live and their biggest show is at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, last year that attracted over 35,000 people um, and as you say it doesn't seem to be recession hit on the basis that the price for the ticket entry is £20 per head and that includes the children. VIP is slightly more expensive but we have there was a retail stand selling Lego at the show and over four days, um, it did £1 million. So that's a lot of Lego with an average price of £240, which is, as you would say, quite a lot of money, but on, on the other hand, well spent. Not quite sure it is well, well spent, but uh, well, that's uh, from a parent point of view. But in terms of a shareholder perspective, it looks as though you do have uh, something which is, is scalable, and obviously you have the brand there with the Lego uh, uh, at least with a Lego um, uh, trademark, which is uh, is clearly a very, it's almost a universal thing. It's like having Disney on board. Well, we're not, we're not, we don't actually have a license with Lego. We've collaborated with Lego very successfully. The brand is independently owned, and is basically um, every prop, every every show we are involved with. It clearly states that. But I think the most interesting thing that's happened for us over the last six months, we've had a lot of brand extension. So the Brick Live show has now morphed into Brick Live Kids Cafe, which the first one was launched in Seoul earlier this month. And we have a contract um, in China for 100 such cafes. Um, they're all educationally based. They are based around the fact that parents 
attached mothers, parents, whatever, go out with their children and they want to do something with their children. We have launching in Beijing in a mall in uh, North Beijing. We have a thing called Brick Live Kids, which is like a creche, basically, which um, enables the parents to go shopping, leave their kids, etc. Um, Brick Live Touring, we just talked about. We have Brick Live Centers, five of which are being launched this year in China and Korea, which are permanent spaces for parents and kids to visit. So, so basically, you've you've already got the. I suppose it's the uh, all companies are either trying to make it big in America or, or China, and you're already on. You know, you're already in one of the biggest market. Well, the biggest market in the world. Well, yes, we are. We um, actually next Tuesday we will be launching our first Brick Live Center at the Olympic Center in actually just outside Beijing. The it's a place called Fulong, and the. Um, the people in uh, uh, China are obviously very interested in the Olympic Games. It's part of the culture of China. The Winter Olympics go there in 222, and they're already gearing up. And our, our centre is themed around winter sports, and it's there to help educate children in China about winter sports. It's also based in a major complex. So as the kids come in with their parents to stay in the hotel, they are obviously have an option to buy into the um, Brick Live Centre, which is uh, a clearly guaranteed traffic. Um, we're launching a new Brick Live Centre in China in uh, Shanghai in October, um, and we, as you say, it's the largest market in the world. We launched earlier this year a show in New York, and we have plans for expansion in the United States. Uh, we're obviously existing in Europe. We have shows in Switzerland, we have shows in Italy, Brussels, um, London, uh, Birmingham. So Europe's obviously a key market. Last month we had shows in, we launched in Southeast Asia in Jakarta and we also um, obviously have been big in Japan and Korea. In Japan we've had seven shows this year. Right, so so basically, um, at the moment, we've got a twenty-three million pound market cap company, which has basically got a global footprint, and uh, presumably, uh, you're looking for the next year to to get back into profitability. Is that right? Well, yes. Um, if you uh, th this year is half over, if you like, the accounts that were published last year, we were only trading for um, nine days of the year. There was a reverse takeover, so basically they don't really have a great deal of meaning towards the value of this company. Um, and um, yes, we will be profitable this year. Um, yes, we are obviously very interested in, in growing our brand. The key thing is, as well as having a healthy bottom line, the most important thing that I believe is to invest in the brand. We're a startup company and growing the brand is very important. Um, We've looked at, uh, when I first got involved with this business, which was 16 months ago, uh, I, I was very impressed by what Kidzania had managed to achieve around the world and very quickly. And um, uh, we, uh, our kind of target is to, by the end of 220, to be in 100 cities, having different brand extensions. Obviously, we are a licensing company, so we're not, we're not putting on the shows ourselves. So it's a low margin, sorry, low overhead, high um, margin company. Right. Well, I, having been to Kidzania, I'm still trying to pay off uh, the, the, the cost of that place. Presumably, your experiences are slightly cheaper than uh, uh, Kidzania. But uh, it, it, the, the, the brand you have, I mean, is it just down to marketing and, and that's it? Yes, I think I've spent my life uh, as an individual in events, um, primarily in Asia and other parts of the world. And over the years, I've learned that um, if you work globally, you have to work with good partners. Um, in each marketplace, we have great partners. And obviously, the cultures are different in every market. And you have to work within that market. So, for example, in China, we have a joint venture. We have a genuine joint venture with Chinese people, with a Chinese office, etc. And so that enables you to tap into the culture. The, the thing that's really interesting about this for me 
is I had originally bought into the company not having seen the company. When I first went to the first show, I was just so shocked by how happy everybody was. Parents were there with their kids. It's, it's screen light. Um, nobody's on a phone. Everybody's creating. It's all about building. It's all about creativity. It's what every, I think, parent wants to see their children doing. So um, education, creativity, it's very important. And I think this is, I guess, why people come to Brick Live, because it, 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 it fills a need. David Ciclitera, uh, Executive Chairman of Live Company, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.